Hi guys, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to talk you through my kayak setup. So as some of you may be aware, I've got a Viking Reload here. I've been out on it probably 10, 12 times since I bought it earlier in the year. And I use it for all sorts really, just general fishing, I'm trolling, um, I, I drift fish, I, I anchor, but I've also been tape fishing, I've landed sort of 35, 40 pound tape with it. And I've done night sessions as well, so I use it for a whole variety of things. So I'm just going to talk you through my setup on a general day-to-day -day basis first and I might make a second part to the video about what I changed to set up for a nighttime trip. But yeah, let's get let's get to it. I'll talk you through it. And many bits I talk about I'll try and link in the video. But any questions you have, just leave a comment and I might get back to you. So we'll start at the front. So this is the front handle which I use to drag the kayak down the beach. So when I pair this and load the kayak up with a sea tug with sand tracks wheels that's pictured um, I load it up on that and then I can pick the kayak up and walk down the beach pretty much any type of beach I can drag that down without real, any real problem so it's, it's quite a heavy kayak I think it sits about 34 35 kilos unloaded so once loaded up it's quite heavy as you can imagine but with the handle at the front and the right trolley it makes quite an easy job so here's the start of the anchor trolley, but I'm going to talk about the anchor trolley and the whole anchoring system later in the video. Okay, so we'll ignore that for now. So the reload have great front hatches, and these are brilliant because what you can do, you can store your sea tug in there. So what I do, I'll take the kayak down to the beach, and then when I'm down there, the sea tug dismantles, and you can fit the whole lot, including the wheels, in here, no problem. You may notice it's a little bit wet in there, but that's nothing to be worried about. That's just condensation in there, or it might be water from the sea tug wheels, but it definitely doesn't leak. That's quite normal. But what I do have in here, I have a two piece paddle that's just a spare. So if my one did fall in the sea, which it never should do because it's leashed, um, there's a spare here. You've just got to try and get it out and connect it. But I always carry a spare, it came with a kayak, so it's a good idea. But yeah, that's all I really use the front for. But it's got a cord here, so it can't go anywhere. You can't lose it. Right, so here's the tackle pod. Um, I used to have a Viking Profish 400, which is a great kayak. But one thing it did lack was a decent tackle pod in the middle. So unfortunately, the Viking warehouse burnt down earlier in the year, which obviously led them to stop making bits for it. And uh, the tackle pod for the 400 became pretty much extinct. So actually, when this reload came up on the marketplace, I jumped on it, and the main reason I bought it was this tackle pod. So before I show you what's inside, I'm going to show you the setup at the front. So I start with the electronics first. So on my right, I've got my GoPro. It's not actually the GoPro I normally use. This is GoPro 5, but I'm using the GoPro 10 to re record at the moment. But yeah, so that GoPro is recording most of my footage. And occasionally, I'll turn it around and record footage from the front. If you've seen any of my kayak videos, you'll see I do quite a lot of filler shots looking down the nose of the kayak. Um, that's just the same one, and I just spin it around on the pole there. I, this one's got a case and a, a charging cable that allows me to charge it through all weathers. So it's not waterproof, but it's definitely rain resistant and it's splash proof. Which I can show you about the GoPro setups I've got later on actually with the weatherproofing. And with my GoPro 10, I've got a charging door in it, which allows me to plug it in permanently. And what I've got over here, is a wind reducer so this is just a bit of sponge that goes over the top of the gopro and that stops wind noise when i'm talking into a microphone they do a great job to be fair and i think they're sort of 10 15 pound from amazon so you can see the charging cable goes into my tackle pod and i'll show you how i charge them in a minute so here i've got my fish finder can't remember the exact model i didn't buy it it came with a kayak but i will link it in the comments below and i'll find the paperwork but yeah, this is um, a great bit of kit, to be honest. And before, I used to only use it to find my depth, and that was it, really. But now, as I progress and I get more experience, I now use it to go and find shoals of fish. So most trips I do out, I'll, I'll anchor three or four times now. Um, as soon as the fishing goes quiet, the anchor comes up, and I move on to somewhere else. And I use the fish finder to find structure at the bottom or any shoals of fish that I can see going past. And in conjunction that, I'll have my phone. And at the moment it's showing you it's got Navionics, which is basically the GPS. It's an app on your phone, which is pretty much invaluable to me. 
and there I can look for reefs and wrecks and other kind of landmarks and then I know where to head to and where to anchor and I use that in conjunction with the fish finder to try and find out good spots. Also the reason I have that phone in that position is if I want to do live streams for the channel it's pretty much set up to go there and as you can see I've got a power lead coming out of my phone into my tackle pod so power's never a problem now. And that's pretty much it. Doesn't really change. For nighttime setups it does change a little bit. And that's pretty much the only thing that does change is the actual electronics. And I'll put lights on, but I'll show you in a in part two of the video. Um, here I've just got another GoPro adapter. So, I mean, I do have two GoPros. Sometimes I have one facing forward and one facing me, so I don't have to swap them around. Or quite often that's where I put one of my lights. So I'll just leave that adapter on it for now. So right now for inside my tackle pod, and I'm going to try and show you this. It's a little bit awkward because I've got the camera under my chin. But yeah. Right, so first, I've got my rig wallet. So I've got all sorts of rigs there. Generally pulley panel rigs. I've got tote rigs in there. Um, bream rigs. I'll make, I'll make a few speciality rigs up for things like gilt heads. And there's a stingray rig there as well. Basically a good assortment there. But I'll talk to you for the rigs that I use a bit later when I look at the rods. So, in here, I have things like float setups, keep them separate to stop entangling. Let's put the lid back on. How much you can see here but here i've just got a lunch box i can't take it out because it's, it's wedged in there i've got it in there but i can't get it back out but so things like i'll have things like a knife i have a priest for the occasional times i do take a fish home and forceps t-bar probably all the most used tools i've got things like you know bait elastic a bait mate on the car i'm forever using quite big baits so these are invaluable for me oh sorry there's a nice camera um, what you do see here, a few spare cable ties, and this is for the trip on the anchor. But I can show you that when I look at the anchor later. But it's always good to have a few spare. Some carabiners there, another bait bar, bait needle, and scissors. That's generally it, really. It just bits like that. I do carry a small little box, different size hooks, glow beads normal beads and um, quick links clips that's always with me um, hopefully I'm just going to move the camera a little bit there's a little recess in the bottom of the well here you can see and then here I've got a pair of scales with my sling and I normally put all my weights they're just rolling around in the bottom here but yeah it fits quite nicely in there I don't like it too full in here Oh, sorry, I completely forgot about the power. So what I do have, I've gone well over the top of the power packs, but sometimes when I get wet or something, and then you need to use a spare. So I've got two quite large power packs here. I don't know what make this one is actually. This is a cheap one off Amazon, so it's fine. And these aren't fully waterproof in these bags, but sometimes you get hit by a big wave and you'll get a little bit of water coming here. So just like a little bit of protection. So there's one. So keep nudging that camera. On number two. This one's an anchor battery pack. It's much better. Very large though. So that one's, you can see the GoPro's plugged into it. This one the phone's plugged into. And I've wedged them on top of a lunchbox I have in here. And I'm not going to get it out because it's quite hard to put back in. Bin now I've got my 12 volt battery and that sits right at the back and then these battery packs kind of wedge on top just to keep them out of the way it's kind of I've had a lot of problems with electrics and charging and that's kind of the best solution I've found so far but I mean there, there may be better ways of doing it and that's it really I don't like to put too much in there because it's quite hard to sort through when you're underwater and you find if I poke, poke the wires into the back, it shuts down without pinching them, which is good. So I will just show you the back of the fish finder. 
Sawmill Tackle Pod. I do have three rail blazer ports here, here, and one under the fish finder. They come as standard there, but I actually had to put mine on there. They didn't come on this tackle pod, but they seem to come on the later ones. But what I have done here, I put a waterproof um, seal here, and that's where my fish finder wiring goes through. And it goes down into the recess, and there's a hole drilled through the back of the tackle pod, which goes to the power pack, which I'll show you in a minute. And on top of that, as you can see, I've got a four port extender bar there. So quickly, before we move on, the great thing about these tackle pods are if you pull this bar out here, the whole tackle pod comes up and comes out. So what that allows me to do is I can bring the tackle pod indoors the night before I go out fishing, but then I can load everything else up in the car, and then I can make sure I've got everything ready in the tackle pod and all my electronics are charged. And then it just gets put in the car the morning that I go. Right, so moving on, here are the pedals for my rudder. This is what I steer with. Here's an adjustment here, so when it gets a little bit loose, um, you can just tighten them up here. And I will show you the rudder now. Obviously you'll have to imagine it, it doesn't fully um, retract because the kayak's sat on the floor. There's two types of rudder for the reload. You've got the short one and the longer one which retracts. Now the advice I was given is, because I'm a quite a lighted guy, I'm only sort of 75 kilos, that the kayak won't sit so deep in the water, so it's best to go for the long rudder. And the good thing about that is it retracts, which is needed on long rudder, because otherwise your anchor line gets tied around it. So as a tip for you there, if you're ever anchoring, always make sure you pull up your rudder first. So here is a, a separate cord that I've put here, and this is for the rudder. So when I want to retract the rudder, you look at the rudder now, I'll pull it back up. And the best bet is not to do it all the way because it's been quite hard to get the rudder back in the water. So I'll do it about there. And when I'm ready to put the rudder back down, I can just release it like so. So these are the front two rod holders. So the Viking Reload comes as factory standard. It has six of these. The two front ones are here on the other side. And when we move to the back, I'll show you the other four, plus the extras that I fitted myself. So here is a centre pod, and screw that, it has a bait bucket on it. And in here, if I do get ragworm, that's what I use, or live crab, that's what I use that for. Otherwise I don't really use it, to be honest. Just my live baits. Just screw that back on. And I do have rod leeches here, so sometimes if I'm going tote fishing or smooth hounds, I will actually use rod leashes, probably not as often as I should do, but I'll kind of attach that to here. And if you see here, there's actually three deering clips here, so you've got plenty of options there. Moving on, I have, I believe it's a feel-free seat, but I will find the link for you and put it in the description below. Um, a lot of people will have padding, I'm generally okay, I can be out on the kite for sort of 10-12 hours. I do get a sore bum at the end of it, but I don't feel like I need a cushion just yet. So in the middle of the kayak, we have two more of these porks. Um, in here, I would generally just put things like spare leaves, batteries, um, screen wipes, anything electrical that I don't want to get water on. I might put sun cream in there on a hot day. Um, things like that, maybe with my car keys. And there's one on the other side as well. So these are the four rod holders. So there's six of these are standard fitting. So there's two on the front I showed you earlier. You can see one, two, three, and there is one tucked in there, four. You can see the rods in there now. So I use these for when I'm moving around, put the rods in there, or if I'm trolling with feathers out or lures. But otherwise I'm not that keen on them because what you have to do is when you've got your line out, you have to keep constantly looking up over your shoulder at the rod tips to see if you've got any fish on and just hurts your neck. So that's why I use these Railblazer rod holders here. And what that allows is for the rods to point out lower and towards the front, and then I can see the rod tips because they're just in front of me. But I'll show you that later on in the video. What I have done here, I've added an extra Railblazer port. Um, I did have a pole with a light on it for when I went out at night, but I actually leant back in my seat and I snapped the pole off and the whole lot went in the sea. So maybe have to rethink that 
but what it does allow me to do is put a camera boom with a GoPro over my shoulder. But it's just good to have a spare for options really. So moving on. This is just a crate I use. Um, it, it was just in my garage, I have no idea where it came from. But I bungee this, I don't even see it really, it's a bit busy here. I bungee it to the front and I've got another cord underneath the boy here. I'll move that out of the way. Yeah, and I basically bungee it to the back as well so it can't go anywhere. Now in here, I've got my dry bag. Pretty obvious really, anything I don't want to get wet goes in there. So a change of clothes normally or a jumper. My lunch, anything like that. And then I'd normally have my bait in here. Normally consists of frozen squid and mackerel. And I have a coffee flask, Thermos, and a cold drink. That all tucks up there nice and neatly now. This is quite a new addition to my kayaking. And I don't know how I lived without it to be honest. There's still plenty of room in there for anything else you want. Then my anchor folds up nicely there. The reason I put that at the front is I can reach it easily from the seat. And I can drag my reel around and anchor easily. I'll show you the whole anchor system properly and what I do with it along with the anchor trolley um, later in the video. Rear of the kayak, I've got my flagpole here. You can't really see because there's no wind, but I've got skull and crossbones I've always had from the start. My rail blazer, orange flag for safety. I'm just going to move to the other side. So here, I have a keep net. So any catch that I do want to take home, I'll put in here and then I'll throw it overboard and that'll keep it nice and cool. Okay, just a couple things to make sure though when you use these. One, make sure there's no sharks and seals around because they will be attracted to it, obviously. But also, if you're going to paddle and move around, you want to make sure you bring this back up because it causes quite a lot of drag. Tucks in there. So here, I'll have my landing net. It just folds out. So when I'm anchored, I normally have one or two rods at the front of the kayak and that leaves a spot for a landing net, basically. Now, I do need to swap this out for a rubber net because my hooks keep getting caught. But just for now, I use it because it's essential to have a net. I went out at night quite recently and I lost a lot of fish at the side of the kayak, which is quite frustrating. And also I find bream are very good at letting themselves off the hook at the side of the kayak. So landing net's essential now. And when I'm moving, I just fold it up and tuck it down into this recess here. Sits there quite nicely. And as you can see, here's my main paddle. Um, nothing special, it's quite a cheap one, but it's always been good for me. Um, I can't remember the exact details of it, so I will put the link up on the description again. As you can see, I leash my paddle to the side of the kayak, because you definitely don't want to be dropping that. So I'm going to show you the different components of my anchor trolley now. So here I have a bungee to put a bit of flex in the system on a pulley and I have a length of cord and I believe these are yak attack clips which I really like because they really need to the yank a trolley up so this goes to the side and I've got two rings there carabiner and a Z pleat in a nice easy to reach location so the, why I've set this up like this, if I ever got stuck and I needed to be towed, I can undo the clip and the big beads at the front allow the trolley to be taken to the front or the back of the clip. I can clip that onto a tow rope and I can be towed. I know it's, it seems a lot more complicated than other people's trolleys, but I've set it up for that reason alone. And I like it, it works. Moving around to the back, we have these rather swish um, yak attack pulleys, which I really like actually. They really need to net up. Just come around to the other side of the car, I could just show you. It's actually got all the pulleys for a second anchor trolley and all the clips. Now, the idea with this was for the previous owner is you'll have one on one side for anchoring 
and one on the other side for a drogue. But I just found it's too many cords and I wasn't using it, so I've taken the trolley off, but I've left all the fittings in case I wanted to put it back on one day. So I've shown you the anchor trolley system, but now I'm just going to show you the way I've set my anchor up. So I've got a two and a half kilo um, claw anchor there. And on it, I've, I'm running currently with one meter of chain. So where I anchor a lot is in the solent and the tidal pool is quite strong through there. And you're generally anchoring into mud. So this is just, this just works. I used to have two meters of chain, but I found it too heavy to pull back up. So yeah, a two and a half kilo anchor with one meter of chain. So I have the anchor clipped at the front. So on here is a quick release system here, which I'm sure you've seen before. The idea of that is I've got a small cable tie there. Um, if the anchor gets stuck, you yank it, it breaks the cable tie, and then you actually pull the anchor up from the front, which will release it so you can pull it up. Now that's only ever broke on me once in a solid year of kayaking, probably about 30 trips now. But I always carry a few spares I showed you earlier in the video. So attached to the chain with a carabiner, it's my dive reel. Um, I'll link everything in the description. So basically all the things like this I got off of Cornwall Canoes. Um, the anchor I got somewhere online, I can't remember where. But yeah, so we've got a decent, good quality dive reel here with decent line. And then, I, I don't really use it, but this is floating rope. And I've tied it to a floating buoy. Now the idea is, if a ship's coming or you need to get out of the way quickly, you can release your anchor, throw it all in the sea, get yourself to safety, and then at a safer time you can come back and retrieve it because you'll see the buoy floating in the water. Now I don't really use a quick release system like that, but again I'm confident that in a bad situation I can drag my anchor trolley to the side and I can quick release the whole system probably in 10-15 seconds, so I'm confident with the way that I anchor but it's not to say it's the best way or the only way. Okay, right now, so what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and show you the process of anchoring, but I will release another video showing it while I'm out to sea. Um, so I found my spot and I want to anchor. I make sure the carabine is in the middle. And then what I normally do, I'll just move a rod out the way. And I'll just put it there. So then I can reach my anchor. And I'll pull the anchor and the dive reel. I'll set the anchor up. And that goes on my tackle pod. Ready? So what I do then is with the slack line, I clip it through the carabiner there. Hopefully you can see this okay. And I'll get my anchor and I'll just dangle it in the water and hold it by the chain. And I'll make sure everything's tangle free. I'll drop the anchor and then I'll release the reel. And that will keep going. And when I feel the anchor hit the floor, I will keep my finger on the reel and move the anchor trolley back in the kayak. And I'll still have my finger off because I'm letting out slack. Now the general rule of thumb is whatever. Um, depth of water you're in, you want to times it by three and let out roughly that amount of slack, which is, you know, I've just done it enough times, I can just gauge it now. But at this point, I'll be locking off my anchor trolley in the Zerg cleat, and I'm still letting out slack. It's hard to show you because I'm on my decking, letting out slack, and then I'll feel the anchor pull at this point, and it normally swing my kayak around. And then when I'm happy, the anchor's gripped. I personally, I clip my anchor reel onto one of the side D clips. So I don't, I haven't used a quick release system. I'm confident enough that I can sort myself out in seconds, but that's after experience. I know a lot of people, they put the whole system, they'll tie this bit to the Z cleat, so that way they can release the whole anchor system and throw it out, and if they need to get away. But I'm confident enough that I can sort myself out and if not, I'll show you my vest later. I've got a quick release knife that I can just cut it if I need to. But I've never had to. So obviously in reverse now, I want to um, retrieve anchor. That's what I normally do. Sorry, it's a bit fiddly. I'll unclip the anchor reel, put that on my lap. Now I'll haul the anchor up and what I do 
instead of it creating a tangled mess on my lap, I throw it overboard the other side, and the tide will take that, and it generally keeps it tangle free, generally. And then I'm gonna haul my anchor all the way up, and then when I feel that chain hit the carabiner, it won't go anymore. That's when I release my anchor trolley. And I pull on the cord. Till it's in the middle. The lump. I'll the anchor up. Put it in the center. And then I will reel the white, uh, and then I reel my line, and I try and do it carefully so it doesn't tangle. And then that way, the next time I use it, which is normally after a little paddle, it's ready to go again. So then, put my anchor back here, reach around, put the reel in, and then I'm ready to paddle off safely. So my general setup for normal fishing is a little bit different if I'm going out at night time or if I'm tote fishing really. But here's my general setup. So on the far left, this is just a Sonavada X. It's a very cheap spinning rod. It's a 20 to 60 gram. And I have two of these reels and these are Daiwa. I think they're about 18 pound. And they're not bulletproof, but these get dunked every time. I don't even really wash them. And they just seem to go on for quite a long time. Now one of them is starting to fail on me. It's starting to slip a little bit, but it's been abused for about 18 months now. So um, it's doing well. On here, I think I have, I can't remember what braid. It'd be 15 pound, 14, 15 pound braid. Now this is the rod that I will put out feathers. And when I'm trolling to my mark, I'll either have feathers or a lure on here. And I'll, yeah, I'll troll it out and try and catch fish on the way out. Um, when I'm going to drop anchor, I'll try and retrieve it to keep it out of the way. But then in my session, if I'm sat there and all the other rods are quite quiet, this would be my rod that I'll just get a, a lure and I'll bob it up and down to, over the side or maybe feathers. So these next two, my two main rods, they're both Shimano boat rods. They are 12 to 20 pound and these are what I always put my big baits out on. I generally put two big baits out on every session and they will go into these rod holders here which I'll show you in a minute. On here I have a Pen Fathom 2 on 20 and that's my main reel. That's the one that deals with all the big stuff I find. But invariably I catch them on this rod annoyingly. This is a Shimano TR200. Um, not massively impressed with it to be honest, but my recent tope session, this handled all my tope, so it's obviously not a bad reel. And on here I have 50 pound braid on. Actually both of these um, multipliers I have 50 pound braid on. And as you can see here, I've got the clip to leash it. I've obviously been out um, smooth hound hunting or tope hunting recently. But yeah, these will stay in the middle and then the big baits will go out on these when I'm fishing properly. And then my last rod I have is an ugly stick. I believe it's a boat rod and it's a, let's just have a look, it's an eight to 12 pound. So as I said, this is a rod I put my scratching rig out on. So I normally put a flappy rig on here or a pop-up rig or a custom built um, bream rig. And I'll generally punt this one out as far as I can front ways. And I'll put this rod in the front rod holder. But I'm just gonna take you to a different view now. I'm gonna sit in the car and I'll kind of show you what I do setting up my rods when I get to a mark. Now I'm just going to talk you through what I do once I've anchored up and I'm ready to sort out my rigs and my rods. So what I'd normally do, I'd normally get my big weight baits out first. So like I said earlier, I've got two 12 to 20 pound rods with multipliers on. Now generally I'm fishing for things like smooth hounds or rays, um, congas, you know, big stuff on these rods. So I'd have a pulley panel normally or a running ledger rig or whatever I'm using at the time. Um, I normally have these preloaded on my rod ready to go so I don't have to mess around on the water. But I will cast each one of these rods out at a kind of 90 degrees angle to the kayak. Um, and then I'll set my drag 
and these actually go on these side ones so that's right but hopefully you can still see okay in the camera it's a bit hard to show you so what i can do now i don't have to turn around to look at any rods i can just look straight down some facing forward and the rod tips are there so i barely have to move my head now to see the, the big rods going i'll do the same with the other big rod i can't show you because the house is in the way my deck is not big enough and that'll go out there so they're my, my main two baits out my big rods um and then uh, this is my ugly stick boat rod that I said about. It's my 8 to 12 pound rod. This will have a free hook flapper on or a pop up rig. Um, I've built a couple of running ledger rigs with small hooks on for gilt hip bream. Just things like that. So this one I'll load up and this one it will be cast out directly forward as far as I can get it. And then what I normally do with this one, I put it in one of my front rod holders. And then I've got all three rods that I use. Um, in front of me. It has to be a really boring session but sometimes if the rods are really quiet I might get feathers out but then there'll be a gap I might move this rod over depending on where the tide's going I see a gap and I might just cast into the gap but it's not very often I do that. Um, so one thing there's a lot of rods here so if I catch something big say if I catch something big on this rod here I'll bring it up to the side but I don't want this rod in my way. So what I normally do, I'll pull the line over the front of the kayak and I'll just swap it the other side. That's what I normally do. Then I've got the whole of this side. I can get my landing net and I can just pull up whatever I catch on this rod and vice versa with the other side. Um, if it's a session where there's a lot of smooth hounds around or tope especially, um, I generally would just run with the two big rods. Um, just worth noting actually, when I'm tope fishing, it's a slightly different setup. Um, I ran the two rods last time and I caught two tope at the same time. Um, one went forwards and one went backwards and there's plenty of tug of war. And the one that went backwards lifted my anchor as well, so it was a bit of a nightmare. So I really advise if you take fish and just go with the one rod. And for that, I did use my 12 to 20 pound and I landed a 35 to 40 pound tope on there. And it handled it fine, but I do actually have a Penrath 20 to 30 pound boat rod. So I'll be using that in the future and it, I mean, if if you're expecting tape, I'd run one rod, or maybe go with two until you get a, a runoff, and then as soon as you deal with your first tape, you'll want to get rid of the second rod anyway. But yeah, so that's generally what I do with my rods. And when I pack up, like I say, I put them all into my moving position, which is the rear rod holders. I'll put that there while I deal with the anchor, like I said earlier. Um, once I've pulled up anchor, this one then move there. And then the two middle rods of my multipliers, I won't touch them, but occasionally I might put feathers out on one of these outside rods and I'll troll. Sometimes if there's a lot about, I'll put a lure out on one and feathers out on another, but you can get a tangle, so it's not really advisable. But yeah, so on this car I've got eight rod holders, and even though I never have more than four rods, I actually use all the rod holders, so hopefully that's giving you some help there and some ideas. So for clothing, my general rule of thumb is it, I will wear this dry suit in almost any conditions as long as I can bear it. So in the height of the summer, obviously, wheeling your kite down to the beach, you're going to overheat probably and pass out, so I won't wear it in those conditions. But I've been out of my kayak every month of the year now, like December and January, and this dry suit's always kept me warm. Underneath it, I do have a Typhoon fleecy onesie that will help. But yeah, so this is a Typhoon, it's a rear entry, which is a bit of a pain. As you can see, there's a, if you put a cord on the zip, it's just about manageable. But it has a relief zip, which is obviously if you need the toilet, it's essential. So I'd make sure you have one of those, you'll always need one of those. Um, I believe this model of Typhoon is a multi-sport 4, if I remember right. Um, quite expensive, but definitely worth the money. This enables you to kayak all year round, really, if you're up for it. So also when I'm wearing my dry suit, I have a pair of Lomo, I think they're diving boots, I can't remember, but if you go on the Lomo website, you'll find them. And these are neoprene, they're very good. Obviously they're not waterproof, but my dry suit is completely waterproof, so they don't need to be. But they're actually only about 30, 35 pound, and they're great quality. And I actually use them with my waders when I'm going out lure fishing as well. So yeah, great investment there. And I do have some Lomo gloves as well, bought them at the same time. Um, the problem with gloves is you can't keep them dry. So in the winter, 
take two or three pairs if you can and really try and protect your hands by putting them inside your life jacket that's what I do but yeah you need to be a bit more determined in the winter I mean except things are going to get wet so obviously they're not waterproof gloves there might be a, a better alternative there I haven't found them yet so when the conditions are too warm to wear your dry suit um, I quite often just go in shorts and t-shirt to be honest if I'm doing daytime session but when I'm staying out into the night time the wind chill can get up so what I'll do then is I'll take my wetsuit so as you can see here I've got my O'Neill wetsuit and just some cheap Osprey wetsuit trainers um, quite often on a warm day I'll still wear my wetsuit just to save me putting sun cream on but I kind of you know it depends on the day how hot it's going to be shorts and t-shirt are fine but never wear shorts or t-shirt at night because as soon as that sun goes down it always gets chilly sorry guys it's got dark outside so i've had to move into my garage to finish the video off but last thing i want to talk about is my pfd so the first thing you might notice is this is very loose and i wanted to show you this because what a lot of people are doing they're not fitting these properly and what happens is you go overboard and before you know it this happens and it rides up above your head and the next thing you know you've got no life jacket so you really must make sure that these are fitting properly and it can't be pulled off um, this is probably quite big on me because I normally wear it with my dry suit and clothes and whatnot but um, I'm not going to do it now but when I'm out on the water I'll make sure well before I get on the water I'll make sure that everything's tight fitting maybe a bit uncomfortable guys but safety definitely is more important um, I used to have pliers and my t-bar and all sorts of stuff on the front but I worried about when I went in this is the kind of stuff that stops you getting back on your kayak easily. Um, getting on your kayak is a lot harder than it looks. If you haven't tried it, you need to try it and um, to see how hard it is. But you don't want a load of stuff here. But with that in mind, you still have to have the essentials. So first I've got is a safety knife. It's quite a good one. It's quite expensive for what it is. And it clips in there nice and tight. It's never going to come out unless you want it to. But yeah, so this is a, I believe it, yeah, a Nico NRS. Like I say, quite expensive, but the good thing is it's always right here. So if I ever need to cut my ankle line quickly, or there's a tangle or something like that, I can just clip it out, cut it. I don't need to look through my centre console and panic trying to find my other knife. So on the other side, I've got my radio. So I'll try and get this off. So this is a Standard Horizon HX890. Pretty good radio, it's floating. So, so now if it if you drop in the sea, you probably lost it anyway, but it floats. Um, it's actually uh, got a DSC button on it, which is here behind it, you see. It's got a release flap and it's a button there. And if I press that, all my details and my location will go straight through to the Coast Guard. So yeah, that's it, that's my life jacket. Um, I believe my pockets are empty. Oh no, no, I've got a safety whistle there. Just in case everything else fails, you've got that. But that's it. I try and travel light on here now, like I said before, try not to overload it. It's got a lot of pockets. So the actual life jacket is a palm, and you'll get these from Cornwall Canoes website. Because the guy that runs Cornwall Canoes, Liam, he's quite big in the um, kayak fishing world, but he actually designed this. So it's a, a angler and a kayaker who's designed it to be good for the job basically so they're a great bit of kit and well worth the money so head over to there i'm going to link it in the description as well but yeah always make sure you wear a life jacket and always make sure it's done up tight so it can't be pulled over your head right guys i'm just going to talk you through my gopro setups that i use in a kayak that i talked about in the video briefly earlier so on the left here is my gopro hero 5 black and on the right here is my gopro hero 10 um, both are able to be charged completely all the time in a kind of weatherproof um, setup, but they're both slightly different. So I'm going to just show you the both components. So to start with, here's a GoPro Hero 5. Now what you need to do, you take the door off, and then you buy this cable from a site which I will link. It comes over from America, but I'll put the link in the description. So you have a special cable that comes with it. But you also have this clamp here. And this is an old GoPro case, or yeah, kind of a case that I had that has a door to access the charging point. 
so you actually get this clamp here with the cable and the kit that comes over from America which I'll link but that's what you do you put this in its case as normal and you can see that you can access the charging point it's got this special cable here and you put it in there and then what you can do you kind of clamp the lead in here and that now makes it I mean it's not waterproof you couldn't dunk it in the sea but it makes that GoPro pretty much water resistant and um, if a wave splashes over it you're not gonna have any problems and then this enables you it's on quite a long lead you can't see it here but I went for the longest lead I can't remember how long it is but it's about I think it's about 60 inches but yeah, so that goes all the way to my tackle pod and I can permanently have my GoPro um, plugged in. In addition to that, this is the wind socks I use for them. You just get these off Amazon cheap um, and these make a massive difference. And what I have done there, where the clamp sits, I actually just cut bits out of the, the case. So I'll show you. It might take me a little while to do this. Kind of feed the cable through. So I just have to do this. I'm not looking at the camera, but kind of it's a bit of a faff. But and obviously you can use these as normal without this cable setup. They're a lot easier to use in. But this way. So this sponge covers all the microphones, but it leaves the screen free. I'm not sure if it's got a battery in it at the moment, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So now I can attach that to the kayak. I can permanently charge it through the lead, so I don't even have to ever turn it off. And it's also got um, a wind reducing on there. Uh, sorry, a wind reducing kind of case. And it makes a huge difference if you don't have an external microphone. I mean, I do have an extra microphone that I do use, but I prefer not to use it on the kayak. So these kind of get me by. So that's a GoPro 5. So the GoPro Hero 10, I actually got all the components off of the GoPro website. Now the same site that did the the sort of weatherproof charging kit for the GoPro 5 they do do a 10 version but I think it's a complete case that you put it in and it's quite expensive but actually for the GoPro Hero 10 you get this attachment that's this door here but it actually has access to the charging port so obviously that makes your GoPro 10 not waterproof you drop it in the sea you're gonna have serious problems with it so where they are waterproof beforehand taking the the charging door off and putting this one on definitely makes it not waterproof so just bear that in mind but yeah i think this is off the gopro website this door and it's just a standard um, battery cover and then i've just got the longest gopro lead i can find and that's off the gopro website as well because i've paid for their monthly subscription i get quite a lot of discount off the site now so it's an official gopro lead and yeah Basically, you can just plug it in. The good thing about the 10 is you can have it plugged in without a battery permanently. Um, I do get a lot of issues with it though. On a warm day, the GoPro overheats a lot. But, you know, I don't know if that's a faulty, uh, sorry, a faulty GoPro or not. I'm going to ring them up and see what they can do about it. But, yeah, and likewise, I've also got a windstock here. Now, I've butchered this one. I've taken the whole side of this out. And again, it's just sort of the same thing, really. I'll show you. I've done it so when I put it in yeah so it comes like that and it's quite good but I've cut a few I've cut a slip off there so I can see the charging light so when it's on my kayak and I plug the lead in I can see whether it's charging or not so I've just cut a sliver off the sponge there which you don't have to do that and then I've cut this whole door off because sometimes if it overheats I've got a battery and I need to take the battery out so I can just undo this pull it out and take the battery out without having to take the sponge off so that's why I butchered that 
I mean, it works for me. Obviously, you can just plug it in. It obviously there's no microphones there, so the wind and reducing element still works, and that's how I have my GoPro 10. Again, permanently plugged in, permanently being able to charge or just power straight from the power pack. Right, guys, I think that just about covers everything in this video. Um, if you'd like a better description of anything or if I've left anything out, um, or if you've got any questions you'd like answered, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. Alternatively, you can find me on Facebook under Fish on Angling. But yeah, I've been out a few times on the kayak and I've struggled in various ways and with different various conditions. And each time I try and make an adjustment to make my whole experience easier, really. Um, the easier the experience, the better the day, I find. But if you have any of your own suggestions to add, then please leave them in the comments below. I'm always eager to find out other ways and ways other people are doing things as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I really hope there's some kayak enthusiasts out there, whether you own a Viking Reload or another Viking or any kayak, really, or even planning to buy one in the future. I hope you can take something away from this video and add it to your own setup. So please like and subscribe, guys, if you like what you've seen today. Um, if you have any suggestions or requests for any other kayak videos for me to film, then please let me know in the comments below and I can get on and get that filmed for you. But yeah, awesome. Um, I'll see you again, guys. Thanks for watching and catch you later.